Hi everyone, it's Anura here from Canvas Beauty and so sorry that it's been a while since we posted our last video but as you can see I'm pregnant. So I'm currently seven months and not only am I pregnant but one of our other business partners is also pregnant. So there is definitely something in the waters here um, that Callie is desperately trying to escape. Um, but what I thought I'd talk about today is pregnancy at 38. So it is my first pregnancy that I'm going ahead with at 38 years of age. Not particularly young and also the skincare that I've been using because at 38 your skin's obviously a lot less elastic, it produces less collagen and when it comes to pregnancy your skin's expanding at an exponential rate there's stuff going on with your body which is pretty amazing and then afterwards it also kind of well hopefully shrinks down once you know you lose the amniotic fluid the baby's outside and you know um, there's just heaps of stuff going on so pregnancy skincare doesn't need to be confusing it's actually fairly simple what isn't simple is what your skin does to you because your skin is constantly changing not just from first trimester to second and third but like week on week because every week your body's doing some crazy thing like oh i'm growing a brain i'm growing a nervous system i'm growing you know a whole set of organs and producing different hormones in order you know to do that and what that can do is have an effect on your skin so one week you can go from having really oily skin and then getting pregnancy acne to all of a sudden having dry skin and getting pregnancy eczema um, all of which I experience, you know, all the fun stuff. So I'm going to discuss that to the type of skincare I use, type of skincare that you should avoid during pregnancy um, and what my experience has been. So we'll talk first about pregnancy at 38. It, it was a natural pregnancy. Uh, no issues uh, getting pregnant. And when I found out I was pregnant, um, I really had no idea until I took the test because the symptoms are just like period symptoms. They were exactly like PMS, which is all the more confusing. And my skin kind of stayed the same. So I continued with my usual routine. I was using vitamin C at the time in the mornings. I was using retinol at night. So I stopped that when I found out, which was around about seven weeks. And look, if you find out that you're pregnant late and you've still been using retinol, don't stress. So Vitamin A, you know, retinol, retinoids is something that you should avoid during pregnancy because vitamin A as a supplement, so something you ingest, has been clinically proven to increase the risk of neural tube defects and impact your baby's development. So that's why they tell us to avoid retinoids uh, just as an extra precaution. There isn't any evidence yet that retinoids and retinol actually gets absorbed through your skin and goes into your bloodstream. So some people that I know, and it is entirely their choice after the first trimester, because the first trimester is when your baby develops um, the brain and the nervous system and the spine and, you know, the risk of neural tube defects is pretty high. They go back to using, you know, their retinol. And it's not prescription retinoids like, you know, tretinoin and the very, very strong retinoids, but just the sort of over-the-counter stuff, the 0.1 retinols and stuff. And look, you can do that, and that is your choice to make. You know, for me personally, I found that swapping retinol for salicylic acid was enough to keep acne at bay, so I just stuck with that. So what I did was, the first thing I noticed in the first trimester was that I got pregnancy acne, um, which was a lot of fun. So... I started off with using Beauty of Jossian's Ginseng Cleansing Oil. The reason I chose this cleansing oil is because it has ginseng. It's a natural herbal anti-aging ingredient. I'll take anything I can get at my age. So I use that on my face, you know, I rub it in for a good, you know, 40 seconds, very gently. Then I follow with the Skin and Lab Barrier Derm Foam Cleanser because that is super gentle. But at the same time, I feel like it gets into your pores. I use like a tiny amount. It foams up heat. It just, it's silky. It's luxurious. It's nice. When my skin's still wet, I use the TM Vita B5 toner because that stuff is life. 
It is my favorite toner. I've used it for ages, never gonna stop. And even though my skin was getting oily and that is quite a hydrating toner, the main reason I use it is because of the panthenol content. So it has 1% panthenol, which is more than enough to do the trick for your skin. And it basically keeps redness at bay. So if you have acne, it is still a good toner to choose. And it also reduces the pH level of your skin. After that, I went and applied the COSRX BHA Blackhead Power Liquid. So it's got a derivative of salicylic acid. So it's like one shade gentler than, than pure salicylic acid. And it is absolutely amazing. So I basically just patted it onto my forehead and my chin, which is where I was getting acne. And within maybe about four or five days, the acne started clearing up. And I continued to use it every second day. And then I eventually just took it out of my routine because I noticed that your skin's never in a permanent state of affairs, especially during pregnancy. So I thought, I'm gonna take it out and see if it comes back or maybe it might do something else like get dry, which it did. After that, I went on to the Skin and Lab um, Barry de Milky Serum, um, just for a bit of hydration, because even when I was getting acne, my cheeks are still clear and still a little bit dry. So I avoided putting this on my chin, which is especially oily and acne prone, but I still patted this on my cheeks um, and on my neck. And then in the mornings, I just followed that up straight with Black Girl Sunscreen. And sunscreen is super important during pregnancy. So it is important all the time, but pregnancy hyperpigmentation is definitely a thing, especially if you're dark skinned. So if you're a woman of color, you are more likely to get what they call the mask of pregnancy during the second trimester, which is like dark patches on your face. And it usually fades after you deliver the baby. But if you wanna try and avoid getting it all together, wearing sunscreen is of the utmost importance because the sun is a big culprit in causing hyperpigmentation. With the evenings, it was mostly, you know, a similar sort of routine. And right from the first trimester, I used the Skin and Lab Vitamin C Brightening Serum on my belly. And the reason why is because if you look at my belly, I mean, it's kind of big. And I knew that my skin would have to put on a lot of elasticity. There's not a lot of things that are proven to prevent stretch marks, but a couple of things are centella. So the ingredient that is, is found everywhere in K-Beauty is actually clinically proven to reduce the incidence of stretch marks. The other is retinoids which is you know, a no-no, generally agreed on pregnancy is to avoid retinol. Vitamin C and peptides can also increase elasticity. So I use the Skin and Lab Vitamin C Brightening Serum and I've been using it every day. Just after the shower, I pat it on my belly and other areas that have been sort of expanding. And even at 30 weeks, which I am now, I haven't seen a stretch mark in sight, which I consider an achievement just given my age. But you know, if you do get stretch marks, don't stress because the number one factor really in getting stretch marks is genetics. So if your mum had them, if your grandma had them, you are more likely to get it. But there are ways that you can at least reduce its appearance and they fade as well once you give birth. So you only need a little bit to cover your belly at the start. And as you go on during your pregnancy, obviously it does take a couple of squirts to get good coverage but I've found that it really, it just helped made my skin feel a bit more elastic. And then afterwards, I covered it with a layer of the Barrier Derm Relief Balm, which is like a thick purplish balm. And the reason I like this and chose this over a lot of belly butters is that it's not greasy. So it still creates that barrier that traps in moisture, but it doesn't feel oily like putting pure Vaseline on your skin. And now when I got to the second trimester, all of a sudden I developed pregnancy eczema and my skin got really dry and it started getting itchy in places. And then I just went straight to the basics. So SVR's Topiolase range is incredible for eczema. You can either use the body wash or the body oil. I like the body oil. I just like how it smells, but the body wash just completely unscented is great as well and particularly good for um, sensitive skin on your face and on your body 
And then afterwards, covering your skin in the Top Yulee's Intensive Balm, which I love. And it was my regular body cream throughout my pregnancy. I also used around my eyes the Parapreble Cream from SVR, which is good for treating eczema on the eyelids. It's a very delicate place where, you know, cortisones is, is something that you can't really use unless, you know, you've got the doctor's permission during pregnancy, depending on the strength of of the cream so using something like this you know as an alternative is really good until you can see the doctor or your dermatologist and then afterwards covering my face in a layer of Cosrx Ceramide Comfort Cream I've gone through like five bottles of these and it's semi-occlusive so it, it's not the one to use if you're experiencing oily skin and acne but if moisture loss and dry skin is something that you're battling with especially because I went through the second trimester during winter. It is definitely something to use. The other thing I would say about pregnancy is that you sweat a lot, like a lot. And I use Nude throughout and I've been using Nude beforehand. So there wasn't any adjustment period for me. So my body was already used to it. It's not going to take away the wetness. So if you want to take away the wetness, you're better off using you know, like a buff deodorant, which is also on Canvas Beauty, which contains arrowroot powder, and that helps to absorb some of the wetness. But this prevented all the odors, so there was no odors at all. But yeah, it just felt like sometimes you had waterfalls coming out of your armpits. And that is also, I've learned, entirely normal for pregnancy. So especially during the night, you wake up really clammy, and then you look over and your cat's freezing and the air conditioner's on and everyone's frozen to death and you're just sweating like you're on a tropical island. But you can, it's safe for pregnancy, you can apply it every day or as often as you need to, and it also doesn't block in the pores on your skin, so it allows the sweat and the toxins just to be released. So the one thing I would say is just be kind to yourself during pregnancy. Keep your go-to skincare products at hand, you know, for different situations, dry skin, acne itchy skin you know your body does throw up a lot of problems at you sometimes itchy belly is a real thing during pregnancy and then you just you know you're gonna have to deal with with so many things like i can tell you it's not the easiest thing to do if you're one of those people that sail through it like oh my god that is amazing i definitely wasn't and it is a totally new experience for me and you know you just sort of roll with the punches and the literal punches because your baby is also like kicking and punching you which is kind of cool at the same time but uh, check out our website canvasbeauty.com.au we do have a pregnancy and baby care section just to make it easier for everyone out there who is expecting or having a baby and also wants to buy their baby um, and self-care from the same place and even if you're not pregnant check it out because if you have super sensitive skin or if you have eczema or super dry skin these are the sorts of gentle products with plenty of emollients and natural ingredients that could also work for you so if we have a look at some of the reviews on the products you know it seems like people with ultra dry skin also use belly butters and people who are dealing with uh, weight loss after an operation or are going in for an operation that where they might be getting something implanted are uh, also using stretch mark creams you know to try and help their skin adjust so it has a multiple of uses for everyone and if you want to see this is my belly at 30 weeks so I've got roughly eight to ten weeks to go who knows when she's going to want to come out of Hotel Lanura and um, yeah it's uh, it's hard like a basketball and when it's all done and when I can, you know, talk afterwards, we'll make a video on the recovery and what it looks like afterwards because postpartum's a whole different ball game. And I'm really nervous for that. But anyway, I will let you guys know how it all goes.